Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah Rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selam ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi tayyibin et tahirin. As you remember, the last point that we mentioned yesterday was about the result of gaining knowledge. We explained this point that when we know something, inevitably uh, some sort of close relationship would happen between us with that specific subject. First of all, because we have spent our time in that field and then Especially in our case, it is because it is because our knowledge is on the ultimate truth, which is God, which is the source of beauty and perfection and completion. Right now, after purification, Gaining knowledge, we reach to this step, which is probably, uh, if not the most important element in Islamic mysticism, at least one of the most important uh, factors in Irfan or Islamic mysticism, which is love. <coughs> First of all, uh, we talk a little bit about uh, the word love, which is called in Irfan, Ishq, uh, literally is some sort of plant while it is going to cover any sort of tree, it's going to cause dryness of that tree. <coughs> and freshness of itself. This is uh, the literal meaning of ashaqa in Ara Arabic language. As a term, uh, it is uh, the most severe and the highest level of love. So it is not uh, simply a uh, normal sort of love. Later we should talk about types of love in Irfan or Islamic mysticism. Uh, we can uh, consider love in three sorts or in, in three types. The first type of uh, love, as it has been mentioned by our great scholars, is descendant love. What do we mean by descendant love? Is exactly the same thing that uh, has been mentioned in that famous uh, hadith Qudsi. كنت كنزا مخفيا فأحببت أن أعرف فخلقت الخلق لكي أعرف. First of all, you know the meaning of Hadith Qudsi is the same as revelation from God, but the difference different between uh, Hadith Qudsi and revelation is this sort of Hadith has not mentioned in uh, the Holy Quran. So according to this Islamic narration, uh, God was a hidden treasure, what was uh, unknown treasure, but he, was, he wanted to be known. Okay? As a result of this willing, he created 
people, he created creatures in order to be known. So, uh, as our great Gnostics have mentioned, this is the source, the source of love. So, God wanted, God loved to be known. Okay? For the same reason, uh, I've called this sort of love, descendant love, because it has come from above uh, to us as creatures of God. This is the first type of love. The second type of love is love in the whole universe. Everything, actually in many cases, and uh, I'm at the presence of some of uh, my great colleagues and great scholars, uh, but in order to uh, explain in a simple way, sometimes uh, I'm not uh, enter the deep realm of some of the issues, in order just to have some idea. Okay, about the second one, we have even some sort of uh, controversy and discussion among our scholars, but uh, I just mentioned the summary of it in order to have some idea about this concept. Look, according to uh, our great Islamic scholars, uh, the whole universe is full of love of God. And when we say uh, the whole universe is full of love of God, it means uh, the whole universe has life, has some sort of sense or understanding, and as a result, it has love. And we have many proofs and even uh, rational or transmitted demonstrations in order to prove this fact. As you remember, uh, we have many Quranic verses. Uh, the first verse of uh, chapter uh, 57, chapter 59, chapter 61, chapter 64, and many other verses. In all of these verses, you could find that uh, whatever in, in the heavens and whatever things in the earth and on earth is glorifying the Lord. Those tasbih of God. Okay? But in just one specific verse, it says that It is your problem that you do not understand their glorification. Okay? So, uh, when everything is glorifying the Lord, it means that Everything has some sort of life, some sort of feeling, okay? And in another example, we have in many Quranic verses that uh, material things or even our parts of body, for example, our skin, our hand, uh, are going to bear witness against us, okay? In the day of uh, resurrection, in the year after, they are going to bear witness against us. It means that previously, in this life, they had some sort of life. Otherwise, bearing witness is meaningless. You know, in a court, when someone has feeling, understanding, intellect, life, everything, his witness or her witness would be accepted. Otherwise, no one, no, no judge could hear uh, the witness of an insane person, a mad person. Or, for example, a witness of a tape would not be accepted, okay? So, merely bearing witness of everything in the day of resurrection, in the hereafter, is one of the reasons that everything has 
feeling, uh, everything has understanding on earth in the universe. Okay? So that's enough in order to have some idea that uh, through these elements, the factor of love also is, uh, exist, exists everywhere and in everything. Okay, this is the second type of love. The third type of love that it is our duty to fulfill it is something that I have called transcendent love. What does it mean? It is uh, that sort of love that originates from ourselves. Ability of human being to achieve perfection. Look, uh, the first sort of love was that love that started or began from God. Okay? This last type of, God, of love is uh, that love that originates from ourselves in order to return once again to God. The same circle that is famous among uh, scholars and in Arfan, Islamic mysticism. They say, uh, uh, We have come from God and inevitably we return to Him. We have come from God. Uh, it means we have been separate from God, but not materially, because God doesn't have any material aspect. Even, even though In 